Hi, I'm Tanya Dennis. I hope you've had a great summer. We've had a long break from Big Word, but we're getting ready to start up again, and I cannot wait. If you are in our in-home group that meets locally, then we start on Thursday night, Thursday, September 12th, 8 o'clock at my house. If, however, you're in the online group, which I know most of you on YouTube are, then um, we start on Friday morning on the website, tanyadennisbooks.com. I certainly hope that you can join us. So get ready for a brand new season. We're going to be discussing 2 Kings. We covered 1 Kings in the spring, and this fall we're going to be talking about 2 Kings. A major theme that we have for this season is be distinct. We've, If you were with us throughout 1 Kings, then you probably despaired with the rest of us about these kings and how they just kept getting worse after worse after worse. And they always followed, you know, at least to some degree, they followed in their father's footsteps and leaning toward idolatry and away from the one true and living God. This season in this book, the second half of the book of Kings, we are going to discover that there are a few little lights that are going to pop up. A few kings are going to turn the tide of this deteriorating culture and they are going to be distinct. They're going to stand out as different from the other kings. And isn't that what we want as Christians in this world today? We want to be distinct. We want to be set apart for God and for his kingdom. Now I want to read with you a passage. It's kind of a long passage, but I want to read it to you from Second Peter. As I get ready for these studies, I often have people say, well, what's the point of studying the Old Testament? And why are you, why are you spending so much time studying? You really need to be out there with your hands and you need to be doing things. Well, yes, we need to do that, but we also need to be equipped to do those things. And studying God's Word is so key to becoming equipped and being effective in our world. So let me read this in 2 Peter. I encourage you to look it up. 2 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 2. It says, May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus Christ our Lord. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know him. And I'm sorry, by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. So these promises that we have equip us not only to share him with others, but to also escape the traps and the... Um, the inclinations that we are given, that we have naturally by our sinful nature, um, we're able to escape the world's corruption. But only if we are walking with him and walking in the um, knowledge of him and within his promises. Let me continue in, uh, in verse 5. Uh, so I am Second Peter chapter 1, verse 5. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence, and moral excellence with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you want to be effective in your Christian walk, you have to study God's word. You have to study the Bible and you have to pursue him through prayer and through study. It's the only way that we can be effective in this. Um, not so that we will gain knowledge so much, but so that we will know Him. And by knowing Him, we will know His will. And by knowing His will, we will know what we are to do with our hands and our feet and our, and our voices. We are to know, we will know what we are to do and how we might glorify Him and be most effective in our faith. So I just want to leave that with you and encourage you, um, whether you're doing big word with us or not, Make sure you are pursuing God. Pursue his word. Study it. Long. Crave to know him more and more each day. And so if you can come 
on Thursday night, that would be fantastic. You know how to reach me through the website. If you can't come on Thursday, I certainly hope you'll join us on Friday. And if you can't do that, find a Bible study somewhere. Sit down and just pour over these beautiful pages that you might know are God and King more intimately. I uh, thank you for your time, and I look forward to talking to you soon. All right, take care.